a blessing God. We thank you for a wonderful day like this. We thank you for bringing us together once more to be at your presence. It is always fullness of joy, mighty God. We are happy and we are joyful. We thank you for the life of the mothers all over the world and in the house. We want to thank you for giving them the wonderful gift that no man can give. We bless you, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you. Because all mothers in the house are supposed to be proud. All mothers in the, in the world are supposed to be proud because they are a vessel in the hand of God used for his goodness. So you should be proud. I am proud of women today. I am proud of every woman in the house, in the world, because God is using them in a wonderful way. We thank you. We thank you, Almighty God, for considering them to be, to, to, to be your vessel. Thank you, Almighty and Everlasting Father. In today's ministration, we thank you. We, want, we welcome you. We want you to uh, preside over this Holy Spirit and then um, let the name of the Almighty God be exalted in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, today's ministration is going to be on works of the flesh, another, another part, another section of the works of the flesh. Um, we've treated some last, I mean, a few Sundays ago, praise the Lord, and that was, that was um, in the book of Galatians chapter 5, the book of Galatians chapter 5, if you're there, everyone can open their Bible to the book of Galatians chapter 5. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. We want to read precisely. And then it says, Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immoralities, moral impurity, promiscu promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, distension, faction, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. I am warning you about these things as I warned you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. The law is not against such things. That is in the book of what everything we read from the book of Galatians chapter 5 from verse 22. The law that is the people that are saying that um, the law, the rubbish in the law, the law are not against all those things. And even the new law are buttressing the new, the, I mean, uh, buttressing all what we have read. That is love, joy, peace, patience. If you, both the, both the law and the, and the law of righteousness are, together upholding the fact in the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, said, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The law is not against such things. Both the law of righteousness and the law of Moses, they are addressing literally the same thing. And they are to achieve, they are to achieve also the same thing. Praise the Lord. The purpose of them is to achieve what? Is to achieve the same thing. But the 
the the the works of the flesh the works of the flesh has derailed many in the journey of life and has blinded many as well concerning their relationship with God. All these that we read in, the, in verse 19, those are the, the works of flesh will take mankind away from God. Hello? The works of the flesh constantly taking mankind away from God. Um, when I'm preaching, I always like to direct it to the way with which Christian can pray and receive, praise the Lord, where they can pray and receive. Um, I am not saying that um, I know it all, how you can receive from God, but according to the instruction of the Bible, which we ought to be following, and which the ministers of God that are working for Jesus Christ ought to be following directing people in the path of righteousness is our main job praise the lord i was speaking this morning that lord jesus christ is now our 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 line manager like our supervisor because in the olden days we were comparing the olden days um time and the new and the, the, the new testament i said in the olden days the priest office the priesthood office was temporarily being occupied by Aaron and his children but when Jesus Christ came he became the chief high priest and then all other pastors and all other preachers ministers bishops evangelists or whoever whatever title they put themselves we are under the Lord Jesus Christ and that makes us to have the authority and power to say in the name of Jesus this problem be, so be solved or this problem be diffused and in the name of Jesus Christ power will flow because at the name of Jesus Christ all knees shall bow and all tongues confess Praise the Lord. So we have we have that unction to function through the office that we are given or we are placed in. But you could see that because of the works of the flesh manifesting in the life of many people, there ought to be an antidote and the antidote of it is what we read in the book of galatians chapter 5 verse 22 that is the fruit the antidote of it that is the other side of it is the fruit of the spirit hence all christians need to work hard towards attaining that fruit of the spirit which is love that jesus christ gave us the mandate to love one another Number one, praise the Lord, to love one another, joy, peace, long suffering with one another because our Lord God is long suffering. When we say long suffering, it means that Lord, the Almighty God is willing to bear with us as long as is possible for us to come to our senses, to walk away from sins, and then He steps in again. Praise the Lord. Because He steps out, it can be whole sin. Not that they will say that, oh, you can continue sinning because Jesus Christ already died. God will not see your sin. God will just see your, God will see the blood that Jesus Christ shed on the Calvary. It doesn't work like that, brethren. That is not the way that it is. It, um, we are asked to interpret it. It's, the fact still remains that God will not be in a situation where sins is reigning. It's only Satan. Whatever you are getting in any sin, it is, you know, once it is derived from sin, know that you have you have brought in Satan into that thing and it's working, but it's, ju it's just going to work for a while. In fact, what you are going to pay back is going to be more than what you are getting. Hello, should I say that again? What you are going to pay back for that temporary satisfaction that you think that is bringing you joy, what you are going to pay back 
for Satan is going to be double. So be careful when you are doing that. So check yourself what you did. Is it in line with God? So why did, why did this new covenant have to be made? There's a reason that the new covenant had to be made because the old covenant um, does not address what we read in the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Does not fully achieve the aim. Praise the Lord. The old covenant did not achieve the aim. How, how, how is it that the old covenant did not achieve the aim? Let us read in the book of Hebrew, the book of Hebrew chapter 8 from verse, from, from verse 9. He said, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. What covenant did he make with their fathers? The covenant he made with them, both from the book of Genesis up to the book of um, Exodus, uh, Leviticus, um, um, Numbers, Deuteronomy. He made a covenant with, with them. The covenant with Abraham. He said, the, he said, not according. Okay. What is not according? Let us read from verse 7. He said, for if that first covenant had been faultless, that let us read now a little bit further up. Let us start. But, you know, I wanted to read verse 9. But I always, according to the guidelines of my mentor, I will also always read ahead of the particular chapter, I mean, verse that I want to read, and a little bit more down for us to get clarity of what God actually telling us that don't just pick a, a, a phrase or don't just pick um, a sentence and then start um, turning it in and out, out and in and making mess of it. Let us, what is it? What causes the new covenant to come? Because God gave the Old Testament, I mean, the whole covenant. And he, he God, he, will ne he promised Abraham that he will not change that, that covenant. He said he will not change it. But what made him to change that covenant? Let us go into it. A new covenant had to come. And why do, I mean, is we are reading the Bible. I'm, I'm not just see, speaking from my, from my head now. We are reading the Bible. A new covenant was made. But what happened to the old covenant? What happened to the old covenant? If it is not spoiled, don't amend it. If something is working, there's no point amending it. But if it's not working, quickly amend it. That is what God is teaching us here. What is it that is not working in, your, in, in what you have planned in your life? The ways that you have, you have, you have, um, you have designed and your mindset to want particular things and you could see that it's not working, why are you going headlong in that? Make amendments. If God could make amendments, why, why, why you can't? If, if, if you can, if God can make a new covenant because the old covenant is not working and you are, in, you are working, in one establishment and is not profiting you or nothing is coming out of it. Nothing is, not, nothing is coming out of the marriage and sadness. Why don't you make a new one? You have the right to make a new one. God made a new one. He didn't say you should suffer to death. And that is a little message for the women as well. It didn't say you should suffer. The, somebody is, you are married to someone that is punching you, kicking you left, right, and center, disrespecting you in the public and, and, and talking you down. Also a man as well, that you have a girlfriend or you have a wife that is telling you off or talking you down in front of your friends, in front of, does not respect you, does not give you the iota of respect at all in the society, then why are you together? It means it doesn't work, it can't work. Make a new one. There's no sin in that. There's no sin in that. God doesn't love or like a situation whereby there is a divorce, but he wants you to live your life in a good way. He doesn't want you to suffer. He doesn't want you to suffer at all. Make a good, make a new one. Direct your life such that it will be pleasant to the Most High God. It will be good to the Most High God. 
And God will say, well done, my son, well done, my daughter. A new thing has to be done when the old one is not working. Hello? A new thing has to be done. When the old one is not, is not working, you change. It doesn't matter. I got to this country, I was doing, I was, I was working and I was working. The work was actually, um, uh, I would say, killing my enemy and I, I can't see the future in it, but I didn't have any, I thought I didn't have any other option. But I didn't come to my senses until age 37. Then I realized I had to go back to uni to study. But you can make that decision earlier than that. Based on the situation and the circumstances of the country that I found myself, because I wasn't born in this country, then I have to toe the line before I could get to that level of going to uni and then to make a change. To the glory of God, I'm enjoying it. So it is not something that it is shameful for you to change your ways from wayward ways to good ones, from bad to good, from the walking of flesh to strive for the fruit of the spirit. It is not a bad thing at all, brethren. I'm talking to the youth and I'm talking to the little ones. I'm talking to the adults and I'm talking to the fathers and the mothers today. Praise the Lord. So my ministration of today is going to be of mixture. What is the works of the flesh is taken away from you headlong in the works of the flesh because of the, because of the tiny things, tiny, tiny satisfaction that you are getting from it, whereas you have a bigger, bigger blessings waiting for you to pluck on the tree of blessings. Praise the Lord. The tree of blessings are there. But there is this satisfaction of the of the works of the flesh that is preventing you to pluck that to pluck that blessing from the tree of blessing. Why don't you discard that one and strive to walk towards getting the blessings from heaven? And you you just okay, put on me and try God, or that should be your your words to preach to people. Um, on me, try God for a year. Or you can say, try God for five years. If it doesn't work for you, don't go back. You can, you, if it works for you, blessed be to the living God. Because we know that God will always be faithful to his word. That is the assurance that we, that we are speaking the truth to people out there, that our God is faithful. He is truth to his words. If you try him, he will bless you. It's very simple. Renew your mind. Have a change of heart. Walk away from all these works of the flesh and strive and walk towards the fruit of praise the Lord, and you shall be blessed. So why the change? Now let us see. God, you know, we, we I didn't forget where we saw. Why the change? God made changes. He made changes. So I don't see why you cannot change from that wicked ways. I don't know why you can't be good. You can't be good. You can make a change. You have the willpower. God is, he created you. If he himself can change, you can change. Praise the Lord. Let us make this confession. I will make a change. Let us make that confession. I will make a change. I will make a positive change. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will make a positive change. In Jesus' name. So why the change? Why the new covenant? So the reason we will read, we will get to know it from verse 7. He said, for if that first covenant had been faultless, 
That is, if whatever you are doing has been satisfactory, then no place would have been sought for a second one. If it is working, you know, I told you, if it is working, don't change it. Why are you changing it? You just going to, if it's working, you want to change it, then you're just going to disrupt it. You're just going to pollute it. You can move, you, you. Some people, they confuse modification and modernizing to changes. No, there's a difference between changes and modification, enhancing and beautifying what you have. You know, when you, it's like someone, it's like someone, um, um, it's like someone um, making a sculpture of something and you are, you, you, you start, you style, you style shaping it. And, and at some point you see that it's going towards this direction. Then another inspiration comes. You say, ah, if I put this to, if I add this, to, to this sculpture is going to look more beautiful, this and that, and then you do it. Or an art, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are an artist, you're drawing, and you can see that what you've started with, you can take it into another direction that will be beautiful. You are still, it's still the same concept. You've created it in your mind, and you are still, you can make it, you can still, you are not changing that. That's not a change. You understand me now? That's not a change. You are only growing in the in the what? You are growing in that path. Praise the Lord. You are doing what? You are growing in that path of righteousness. It doesn't mean that you are changing. Praise the Lord. You are only growing. So the fruit of the spirit, when you attain that level, you can modify and grow in it continuously. You're not changing it. There's no need because it's working for you. But when you works of the flesh, do you know that it is it only brings you something temporary? Then don't 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 hesitate to change. Look at it now. And um, let's read from that verse. It said, for if the first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second, because finding fault with them, because finding fault with them, finding fault with them in your home, there's something that you need to amend, that you found something to amend. There's something you need to rearrange. Your ways of life, you find out that it is not working properly. You found it that oh, there's some, you are saying, oh, why is why is things not working? Then it means that you need to change something. You get me now? You need to change something. So God now, we're talking about God now. So because finding fault with them, this is God finding fault with the old covenant, he says, look at that he is with capital letter. It's not just anyone talking here. It's not so. Then he says, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Actually, this is like a, this is a prophecy from the Old Testament. Are you getting it now? This is, this is the thinking, the new covenant that we are reading from in the, in the new, in the, in, in, in the, in the, in the uh, new Bible, that is the New Testament, this already be contemplated in the Old Testament. That is, it is inside, it is inside your fault. It is inside what is not working. It is inside the problem. That is where the solution is. Hello? It is inside the problem. That is where you are going to now come to the, to, you're going to, you're going to, craft out or figure it out. You're going to figure out the solution. That is, that is what I want us to learn from this place. Praise the Lord. That is what I want us to learn from this. This, this particular, and you can see mostly that it is written in italics, which means it's like something from the old, from the Old Testament. Praise the Lord. Which is now being 
reiterated in the New Testament because it's written in Italic. Praise the Lord. So he said, so when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, verse 9 now, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they did not continue in my covenant because they did not continue. They dropped the covenant. Oftentimes, Christians drop the covenant. Oftentimes, Christians drop what? Christians, we drop the covenant. We were talking about um, the last week, we were, we were, we were the preaching about the, uh, the Nazarene, that many people vow, they forget the vow. On be, they vow on behalf of their children. They forget the vow. And then the children are grown up. They can't figure out what was wrong with them. No one to tell them anymore because the mother has passed on, the father has passed on, but no one can tell them what the fathers and the mother has done behind them or on their behalf when they were not even knowing what they And we mentioned example of someone Thank God Hannah fulfilled the vow. We talk about Samson. Thank God that <laughs> no one, no one told Samson. No one told Samson the way and manners is supposed to go and the secret of his vow. Because he was he was meant to be led back to God to work for God and to be doing the work of God. He was doing it to some extent, but doesn't understand the principle of the Nazarene. Hence his life was cut short. So let us, let us, let us, let us. So is it because they did not continue in my covenant and I disregarded them, says the Lord. I disregarded them, says the Lord. <laughs> May God not disregard your prayers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He can do it. He did it in their time. He can do it in any generation. What am I trying to bring out here? I said today's topic is heresy. This is the beginning of the heresy. Praise the Lord. Because when you now get to a nation or a generation of people that now want to change the gender of God, then you know that there's a problem. Hello? When you are now living in the world whereby the people that want to change the gender of God are having more voice than you, that you are Christian, that you have the fear of God, then you know there is a problem which we need to be very, very careful. I'm speaking now to the to the to the to the people that are Bible scholars, that are the custodians of, of the word of God, that they speak and God give them discernment. That though you because God said we should love according to the fruit of the spirit, that we should welcome everybody into the sanctuary for the purpose of them to have a change of heart, to walk away from the works of the flesh and to go into the level whereby they will be walking towards the fruit of the spirit. But because we have welcomed them into our midst, then they now wanted to change us by accepting what they are doing, to be saying that what they are doing, their concept is right than the concept of God. Look at what God said. This is just a warning to all the pastors and to all the, all the preachers out there to, to help their congregation not to go to hellfire, not to accept things that will make God to disregard them. I pray that God will not disregard, disregard your congregation. I told you that this ministry is all about bringing out things that 
people are overlooking. People are not, they are afraid to talk about it. But remember, when Satan is not, when Satan is speaking and you, are, you don't speak back, he gained more ground. Hello? He gained more ground. Let the scenario of uh, um, the power of darkness and the power of light winning is when the power of darkness is speaking more than the power of light, then the power of darkness will want to overshadow. But when the spirit of God raised his standard continuously in you and in your ministry, you will overwhelm them and you will suppress them. They will have a change of heart. We do not pray for their, we do not pray for them to perish, but we pray for them to have a change of heart. That is all, because we are not God. And we don't judge. Praise the Lord. We are working according to the to the to the covenant that God, the new covenant that God has placed in our hand, and we are mindful on, of not committing heresy continuously. But when they are now bringing heresy into the church, and we are now trying to accommodate the heresy, then there is a problem. Because God said in the book of Hebrew, chapter 8, verse 9, the end, towards the end part, it says, and I, is a capital, disregarded them, says the Lord. I pray that God will not disregard our congregation in Jesus' mighty name. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. Therefore, this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their heart. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brothers saying, know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember no more. In that, he says, a new covenant he has made. The first obsolete, now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. I pray that sins will vanish away in your life and in my life, in our territory, in our vicinity, sins will vanish away according to the commandments of the Most High God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brethren, we just want to be mindful of the devices of the power of darkness, which I'm imploring every one of us to be at a lot concerning this heresy. Another aspect of the heresy that you will be hearing among the pastors is that God speaks to them. God speaks to them concerning football. How can God be speaking to you concerning who, who is going to win Champions League for heaven's sake? Are you not tired of saying that? Why are you bringing God into things that are irrelevant? You should be tired of, 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 of saying that. You are using God to, to do um, Baba Jemu, to play Lotto. How? That means there's no more fear of God. Let us fear God. It is heresy you bringing such art into saying things that God did not say to you. And you are saying that God says it. As a matter of fact, let me remind all of us that it is a cause. When someone speaks what God did not speak, that person is bringing a, is activating a cause to him or herself. Don't let us indulge in such things anymore. They are, they are, and they are the things that, they are the things that 
these people observe in us and making and, and start making jest of our God. When you involve God with football, saying, oh, it is Barcelona that is going to win the chance. God told me yesterday that it is Barcelona that is going to win um, um, Champions League or UEFA League or whatever league, or it is Real Madrid or it is that. Why are you bringing that for heaven's sake? Where will you see an imam indulging in that? Because they have the fear of God. Where will you hear any, any other worshiper saying that in the sanctuary? Because you, don't, because you don't fear God, that is why they are bringing changing of the gender of, the, of God into the church. Can you not, can you not just see what the, where, where, where our Christian life are going? Are, are you not seeing the damage we, we ourselves are doing to the, to the Christendom? Are we not, can we not just think? Okay, another one I want to say is the politics. They will say that, oh, God said that, God said that, oh, um, there is nothing that happens that he does not know or does not have hands in. Yes, but how can God, the same God that all of us we serve, one pastor will say that it is one person, a, one person will say it is candidate B, that, and the other, that pastor will be saying that it is candidate B that is, that is going to win. And another one will say that God spoke to him just now, 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 that it is candidate C that will win the election. Ah, it is, it is heresy, brethren, and it is blasphemy. And that is why they are making mockery of us. They are making mockery of us. We are trying to blame them, but we are not. We are not. We are. We are not doing well with that in the sanctuary. We are not doing well at all. Say, like, oh, yeah, God told me it is not over. God, which which God is telling you? Which God is telling you that? When he told us that he has given us the, the power of choice, you make the decision. And then he will now bless that person that you have chosen. He has been doing it from the time of Saul and Samuel, when Samuel was the prophet. The people said that they don't want God to be over. They want a king. When they decided, mankind decided to have a king, they did not. And God said that, okay, Samuel, go anoint Saul for them. Before then, he warned them. He said, look, this man that you, this king that you are, you are asking, you don't want the prophet. This, Samuel, we don't want you to, to, to rule over us again. We want to have our own king. That is where the election and the, rule, the, 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 the ruling of one man comes in. Because he already gave us the choice from the beginning, the power of that. Whatever that you choose, whatever that I will not be, I will, God said, I will, I will not be responsible for your action again. Remember when our father Eve committed that sin, he said, oh, it was because of the wife you gave me. That's why I said, you know, I didn't sin when we were one on one before. But the moment you gave me this woman, then I committed sin before you. So God said, okay, from now henceforth, I'm not going to choose for you again. You choose what you want, and then we will, the, the only thing is that let it, whatever you are choosing, let it be in accordance of my program. In accordance with my plan, your choice. So when you now conduct an election, you decided that this is the person you want there. Whether true rigging, it doesn't concern God. Whether, honestly speaking, whether true rigging or uh, the, the true voting, you place the, you and the moment you announce to the air that this is the person that is going to be there, God say amen. So whatever you now see, because he already warned us, say, Samuel, tell them that this soul that you are going to 
you, are, you said you want. It's going to turn you, your children to slavery. It's going to do this. It's going to do that. It's going to do that. He's not going to be kind to you. He's going to take your sons to, to walk and this and that. They say, oh, and the son, they will not come back. He said, oh, they, they agree to it. it. It doesn't matter. They just want, they don't want, they don't want Samuel again to be ruling over them. That is, they are rejected. God said that Samuel, don't worry. They are rejecting me. It is for you that they are rejecting. They are rejecting me. So if you now decided to say, okay, I go for, I vote for Saul to be, so whatever Saul is now making your children and you yourself to go through in that period, it is left to you. It has nothing to do with God. Your prayer is that, oh Lord, in the time of this person that is now on the throne, let it favor me. That is your prayer. Brethren, stop, stop killing yourself. Stop fighting. There's no need to fight. There's no need to kill anyone because of this. We, all of us, knew that there's going to be an election. Then let us do it favorably. Let's appoint somebody there. And then let us back him up with prayers. It doesn't matter who is there. It has never been matter when whoever has been there. Which one favors you most? Is it the time of Babangida? Is it the time of Abasha? Is it the time of Obasanjo? Is it the time of, um, of um, uh, Shagari? Or is it the time of Buhari? Or which one favors you most? Look at Nigeria. The old way there. But the prayer you should be praying for Nigeria is that in the time or in the era of this person, let it favor me. Let it favor my family. Let me find favor before you. Let me find my own doing. Let me let my let my right let my feet stand and let me benefit from the error of this man. That is all. You can only beg to God. I don't care who is there. It doesn't make any, it doesn't make any, any anything. But even the king, the error of the king of United Kingdom, you need to pray that at this time the queen has passed. Away, but it is now the error. It does not concern anyone who is there or how he got there. Just pray that the moment that they announce him, put the crown upon him, let the error. That's why I sent out a prayer point during that period. That let the time of this person that is now there favor me and my family. No matter, that is it. That's your prayer. Hallelujah. And come and see after four years whether you will not have testimony when you look back. But if you don't pray that prayer and you are fighting, oh, this is the person that's supposed to be there. Oh, this person is a foolish man. It, the error will be foolish to the, to, to the plan that you have. Oh, this person oh, is going to make the whole world turn upside down. That error is just going to turn the plan. I pray it will not happen to you and I. That it will just turn the plan upside down. What you can do is to pray that that time it let you favor me. Let time and season work for me in the era of this person. And that is it. Let us stop allowing heresy to come. They are looking at us that we don't have, we don't, we don't have that um, fear of God. Our, we only say it by man that we fear God, but our act and our attitude, what is coming out from our, our duo and our pastors does not show that we fear God. And that is why so many heresies, people are, they are making a, laugh, a laughing stock of the Christians by saying that they want to change the, the gender of, of God. How could somebody even think to that level? And it still does. So if you now want to say our father in the Lord, what is it? The most important prayer in the Bible is our Father in the Lord that Jesus Christ gave to us. So, who are we going to now say? Is it our mother in our mother in heaven or our 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 what? Our, our what? And because I, I'm, I'm, when the question was thrown back to that person, he shut him down. He couldn't say anything anymore. So, we need to know the right question to be asking these people to interpret it. So. The, the, the prayer, the prayers for every, in fact, every generation has passed through that prayer, the prayer point. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom God. Even those that does not know God, those that does not go to church, 
they pray that prayer. So now you that were just born yesterday, you now want to change it. Fear God now, fear God now, and let God have mercy on this, on this nation and this generation. You now saying that you want to change the gender of, of God. How? How is that possible? How are you going to achieve that? So our father in the Lord now will not be our mother in the Lord or our, 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 I mean, our, father in, our father in heaven or our mother in heaven. Or what are we going to be saying now? I don't understand. But it stems out from the Jews and the pastors not having fear of God, not showing the fear of God in the heart of people, not, not, making, not showing an example. If we should be an ex exemplary to these people that we fear God and God in heaven sees the affairs, see what we do, see and hear what we say. Look at it it's in the book of Hebrew. He said, because the, the, the new, com I mean, the old covenant was not working, he disregarded them. I pray that God will not disregard you and I in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, we thank you for this administration. I pray that it will penetrate into the hearts of many. It will bring a change in the, in the sanctuary of God. Uh, we love you, everyone that are of God, we, everyone that fear God. But let us indulge in, 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 the, in, the, in the fruit of the Spirit. Let us um, embrace the fruit of the Spirit by loving one another in peace, to enjoy one another, and, and the most important, to fear God. Let God's name be written in your heart and the heart of your children, children. That no shame, no disgrace, no, 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 no calamity will come to this generation and many generations to come. Praise the Lord. God bless you and have a wonderful um, Sunday.